Hello AQA and Edexcel students. We know how in that 25 marker in paper three, micro and macro effects are very much expected within it. So this video is perfect. As we take two major macro topic areas, we'll dig down into the micro and macro effects of them, but you need to be doing the same exercise for a wide variety of topic areas that could easily feature in paper three, looking at micro and macro of those topic areas. So great that you're watching this video, but go to my revision for paper three playlist and you'll see that I've made loads of videos already doing exactly the same thing for loads of other topic areas that could easily feature in your paper three. So once you've watched this video, make sure you've watched all of those as well so that you're fully prepared for your paper three 25 market this year. But let's dive into it first by looking at the micro and macro effects from a weak exchange rate. The natural place to go first is the macro effects. So from a weak exchange rate, we know how there should in theory be an improvement in a country's current account balance. More expensive imports, cheaper exports should improve our country's current account position. But if we go further and say as a result of that, net exports in the AD equation can rise and AD can increase, that can take us to higher economic growth, it can take us to lower unemployment, but also we can see higher demand pull inflation as AD shifts to the right. On the inflationary side though, maybe a better way to get there is from the SRAS chain of analysis, how more expensive imports can drive up costs of production for firms who are importing their inputs, um, who then will pass that on via higher prices, that is cost push inflation. In fact, if that effect dominates, you might see lower growth and higher unemployment in the economy as well. That is stagflationary concerns from a weak exchange rate. You've also got the potential for greater FDI if a currency is weak, and that is because foreign firms who are looking to invest in a country, if that country's currency is weak, those foreign firms will have lower startup costs, but also once they've set up, they can tap into the benefits of cheaper exports. So it could just be that nudge for foreign firms to invest in a country where their currency is weak. And that's good news for economic growth, it's good news for employment, higher tax revenues, skills, technology transfers, plenty of places for you to go from there. On the micro side, we can worry about the impacts of higher prices, generally on consumers and on firms. You can worry about higher cost of production that firms are facing. What does that mean for their profitability? You can go down that route. You can worry about firms who have got debts in foreign currency. A weak exchange rate makes servicing those debts far more expensive. A different route would be maybe to talk about how investment back into the firm might be reduced as a result of that. And then you can worry about the potential inefficiency of domestic firms if a currency is weak. Specifically, this will be productive and X inefficiency. Firms allowing costs to rise because of complacency. Now, think of this. If you're an exporting firm, you're naturally seeing the benefits of cheaper exports because your currency is weak. You've done nothing to deserve that. That's just happening naturally as a benefit to you. But also if you're a firm where a major competitor, let's say are imports, well now imports are more expensive with a weak exchange rate. Again, a lovely natural benefit to you without you doing anything to deserve it. So these natural automatic benefits, especially if an exchange rate is weak for a prolonged period of time, can create complacency, inefficiency, cost rise elsewhere in the business. A unique kind of micro effect for you to go into if you think it's a good point. Let's move now to the micro macro effects of protectionist policies like a tariff. Well, on the micro side, just think about your tariff diagram. The diagram there will give you loads of very easy micro effects. We can see on the diagram, can't we, that prices go up with a tariff. You can worry about the impact on consumers and firms as a result of that. Same with lower quantity overall in the market as a result of policies like this. Again, a negative impact on consumer choice, but also producer choice. You could then look at producer revenue, whether domestic producer revenue that goes up with a tariff or foreign producer revenue that comes down with a tariff. Uh, you can go straight to surplus effects, consumer surplus falling. There are even deadweight losses of consumer surplus to look into, how domestic producer surplus rises. And lastly, the risk of allocative inefficiency as now resources move from countries, producers who are very efficient with a comparative advantage to domestic firms, to domestic countries who lack a comparative advantage and therefore who are wildly inefficient. Resources going to inefficient producers, that is allocative inefficiency. Again, we know there are deadweight losses linked to that. On the macro side, we know policies like a tariff can generate government revenue, revenue that can be used to run down budget deficits, run down national debt, revenue that can be used to fund key government expenditures on certain areas in the economy, 
Tariffs can be inflationary. For firms who are importing goods, they're gonna see a rise in their cost of production. The link to SRA shifting left and there being higher cost push inflation is there for you. In theory, a country's current account balance could improve with protectionist measures like a tariff by constraining import expenditure. There's your link to current account improvement. Go one stage further, ceteris paribus. So assuming that export revenue stays the same, there is a link to high net exports in the AD equation, higher AD, higher growth, lower unemployment as a result of that. That's a little bit of a stretch, but in theory, nothing wrong uh, in you saying that. A more direct link to employment though is saying how policies like a tariff that encourage greater domestic output can protect against unemployment. And because labor is a derived demand, maybe even create greater employment. So there you have it guys, micro macro effects of two big macro topic areas. Hopefully you saw how easy that is. Again, it's all about content knowledge really, isn't it? But your job is to do that for a wide variety of topic areas. But as I said at the start, luckily for you, I've done it all for you. In my revision for paper three playlist, you will see lots of other videos, me doing exactly the same thing for other topic areas in the course. So having watched this, make sure you're staying up to date with future releases, but you're watching all of those videos as well. I can't stress enough how important that is. So go check those out as well. I can't wait to see you in future videos. Thank you for watching this one. Thank mm -hmm. you.